Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And how deep do we go down this rabbit hole? I, I tell you, friends. Uh, now we're. I, I got the scripture up here from uh, Matthew seven. I'm not really going to go into this very much today. It's just kind of fitting with everything else we're going to be talking about. We're actually going to be talking about the book of Exodus. Uh, starting off with the book of Exodus, specifically chapter 16. Um, and we're going to be going into multiple scriptures, the book of Psalms, Deuteronomy. Uh, let me see where we at in Deuteronomy. Chapter 8 in Deuteronomy, John, John's Gospel, chapter 5, the Hebrew, Matthew, chapter 4. Uh, Matthew, of course, chapter 4, Matthew there as well. Uh, Genesis, going back into the Second chapter of Genesis, the book of Numbers, and where are we at in the book of Numbers here? Numbers 21. Um, wow, I got more of these up here as well. Matthew 15, right? And Luke 6. Wow, Second Timothy. I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, gosh. You would be shocked to know what he's talking about. Uh, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast you your pearls before the swine, lest they trample under their feet and turn again and rend you. Remember, Jesus says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. The paramount in what Jesus says here cannot be understated. And I am, I'm blown away that it's taken me all these years myself to see these things. And I'm just thankful, though, that our Heavenly Father is kind enough to reveal them. But think about what he says here. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And then he goes into this. Verse 9. Or what man is there of you whom, if he ask his son, son, his son asks bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things unto them that ask him? Remember, we went into this. And I shared that with you, and I asked you to think deeply. Because the things that were happening in the wilderness journey was all under the law. And under the law, there is no mercy. This is one reason why I keep trying to drive these points home. There's so many people trying to go back under the law and you don't understand there will be no mercy for you if you do. Your mercy is through Christ and Christ alone. Ah, oh, Heavenly Father, help me to disseminate these things to the people that might be of a help to them. I really pray and ask you, Lord, for this. Exodus 15, <clears throat> chapter, uh, where are we at? Chapter 16, excuse me. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month, and they're departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, Aaron in the wilderness. <clears throat> and the children of Israel said unto them, would that we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots, when we did eat bread to the full, for you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will cause to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people should go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. And again, this is under the law, so keep those things in mind, all right? Because you have to understand, Christ himself is the greater. 
He is the true mercy of the Father. But under the law, totally different story. Completely. They're already get they're, they're they're in trouble already with God. And it shall come to pass in the sixth day that they shall prepare that which is which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. All right, so he goes to do this manna part, right? Verse, let's go to verse 7. And in the morning they sh th then you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he that hath heard your murmurings against the Lord, and what, uh, and what are we that you murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. <clears throat> for the Lord heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him. What are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Now, just in case, uh, just so we know this, right? If you really begin to study the gospel of G the gospels of Jesus Christ, if you study those gospels and you look at how he lays out the whole narrative, you will see the parallel. But there's always a little slight different twist in the parallel, like here. Then you know they, you know they knew the murmurings, right? Let me just let's do it like this here. Jesus knew. I'll just put it like that. Here we go. Matthew twelve. I mean, it's everywhere, right? Everywhere. Um, boy, you just use Matthew twelve twenty five here for an example. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city of house divided against itself shall not stand. So the thing, the, the point here is just to point out that the same parallel. It was Christ proving who he really was. All right, we can jump down, let's see. I want to get into certain ish aspects here, and I'm not sure where everything's at. I've got so many scriptures, and that's why I have to kind of skip through this. And it came to pass in the evening, the quails came and covered the camp. In the morning, there was a layer of dew round about the camp, right? And when the layer of dew was gone up, and behold, upon the face of the wilderness, fine scale-like thing, fine as the hoarfrost of, on the ground. Now, <clears throat> I don't... One of the reasons why I kind of got into this is my study on DNA manipulation. Um, and as I began to look, I know that in certain documents, uh, like the Egyptian document, the Colbrin, and I do not, and I want to stress this, do, please do not use these documents as a biblical type of reference. Historical reference, perfectly fine. Uh, always remember, history can be, history is always written according to the victor. Uh, that's who gets to win, that's who gets to write the history, right? But the Colbrin is allegedly, this is a document that was the Egyptian version of the events that happened. The reason I bring that out is because in the Colbrin, this is where they claim um, it was basically a passing of Planet X. Uh, and, and when I read the biblical account, it does seem to be something along that line. And here we are knowing that, you know, because of the work I'm doing now uh, in a voluntary advisory capacity, capacity there, uh, searching ancient documents for answers for people in Washington there, everything that went on then is happening now. Even the, the, the aspect of the locust. Uh, they're talking about the next two years that we're going to have the swarms of locusts. Uh, I mean, that that's not an uncommon thing. I think it's like every hundred years or so that happens anyway. So let's see what I have here so I kind of know why I wanted to go in certain areas. And they forgot his doings and his wonders. Work that he had shown them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. I don't remember why I had Psalm there. But the point being here is that, oh, I'll do, we'll do it like this here. Sometimes we're just going to have to double back to do the search here. Um, their clothes, or the, their shoes, we'll just put it like that there. Let's see if I can find it. And when their bread, or bread, I don't know. Um, maybe it's their... 
sandals. Hmm. Oh, goodness, let's see. What I'm trying to find is where we have in there. Uh, put off the shoes. Okay, your shoes on your feet. Um, we know that... That they did not strength abated. I spelled that wrong, I'm sure. Let's see, I'll look for Exodus here. Maybe I can find it here. Um, well. All right, let me go back. Maybe I have it in here somewhere. I gotta find that there. That maybe it's in the book of Numbers. No, no, no. Well, I must have pulled that down. Okay, well, maybe, maybe this is it here. Let me try here, Deuteronomy. Let's just read this here. Uh, I know it's part of what we need to know anyway, but I, I want you. Oh, this is this is the important one anyway. All the commandments which I command thee this day show you shall you observe and to do that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led thee uh, these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might afflict you, to prove you, to know what is in your heart. <laughs> Gee, that's why I love the mercy of Jesus Christ. He doesn't afflict you. <laughs> Whether you would keep his commandments or not, or no, and he afflicted you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you knew not, neither did your fathers know, that he might, excuse me, make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Your, raim, your raiment, in other words, your clothes, wax not old upon you, neither did your foot swell these 40 years. That's that's actually where one of the places I was looking for. I think there's more places than that. All right. <clears throat> now, keeping in mind, basically nothing happened. They, they didn't get old. Um, they didn't, their clothes didn't wear out, nothing. Now, this is important. Didn't, didn't we do a message the other day, friends? I, I forget now. I, I want to say I did a message with you guys about the manna, right? Jesus talking about, he says, you know, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they're every one dead. Remember that? Um, this all plays into it. So let me just pull that up. Every one dead. I maybe have to separate the two words there. Nope, it's not like that either. Manna, dead. Here we go, yeah. And John 6, 58. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. <clears throat> All right. Back, let me back up just a little bit. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. Dwell, oh, maybe I need to go even further up because it's really the first part is what you need to know. Uh, yeah, here we go. I am that bread of life. Ooh, back it up further. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, murmur not among yourselves. Isn't that interesting? Remember what we just had over here? That's what I was telling you about. Follow. It's, it's amazing, the analogies, right? Up here, um, Exodus again, 16, you know, uh, yeah, here it is right here. And what are we that you murmur against us? And in the morning then you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he that hath heard your murmurings against the Lord's, against the Lord, right? <clears throat> look, watch, follow that. It's 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 amazing to me when I look at this, right? The analogy there. God heard the, you know, Moses knew that they had been murmuring against them. And here we have it over here. 
Therefore, I answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. Because well, we already know, Jesus already knows these things, right? No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God, every man <clears throat> therefore, ha therefore that hath heard and that learned of the Father comes unto me. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, and he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. So, <clears throat> the point that he's making here and this is what really got my attention. They were eating the manna, and the, and the scripture plainly shows their shoes didn't wear out. Nothing, nothing was happening. Everything was okay, right? What is that? Deuteronomy right there, right? The raiment waxed not old upon you, uh, neither did your foot swell these 40 years. <clears throat> they, it was almost like divine presence. Everything was perfect. And they were given this manna that supposedly was going to give them long life or was a type of that. And by the way, that shoe bread was put into the ark and it preserved down for hundreds of years. But then Jesus, that's what gets me. Jesus comes along and he says, your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. Now, let me find the other part of that too. Jesus says, I am the living bread <clears throat> which came down from heaven. And if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of this world. Now, if you remember too, though, he also says another fascinating statement there. Let's see. Um, I think I have to do this with just manna. Pull that up real quick for you. Yeah, I think it's right. Yes, that's what I was trying to find where it was at. Verse 31 further up. Our fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, or excuse me, in the desert. And as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. You know, that's a, that, I mean, if you think about it, Jesus, that's a direct contradiction to what they believed. Because if it was a true manna, it would give eternal life. And this is the whole premise that Jesus is going into. And again, what is it? The law, as we've read by Paul's writings, was a shadow of things to come. And we can't live by a shadow. we got to live by the light. So just kind of building this for you, because I really want you to go deep with me to think about these things, right? All right, so now we come back. And I want to go back to Deuteronomy here because this is this is the really caught me into a totally different direction as well. I was actually looking for this about the garment not waxing old, etc. And then I stumbled across this step passage right here, verse two. And you shall not you shall excuse me, and you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness that he might afflict you to prove you, to know you, to... Okay, I'm sorry, it was, it was, was in your heart. Actually, it's verse, verse 3. And he afflicted you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you knew not, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread only, but by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Now, it's not, in the Hebrew, it doesn't actually say exactly that. And we're going to look at this where Jesus quotes this in the New Testament. Because if you remember, in fact, I'll go to that before I read to you what it is in the Hebrew. 
If we go to the book of John, chapter 5, um, let's see. Is it John 5? Let me, I got to figure out where this is actually at. Okay, yeah, here we go. Let's go to Matthew instead, chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. You know, it's kind of like Jesus was living, and notice he's 40 days in the wilderness. Israel was, what, 40 years in their wilderness journey? Afterward, he was a hungered. And that, by the way, the, just so you know where the analogy of that is. Let, let me, let's just, I, I want to verify this. I don't want to make any mistakes here. Hang on. Right? Um, Yes, and the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to the land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came until the borders of the land of Canaan. All right, this is an amazing analogy, and I don't, I really, I'm hoping you guys will pick these things up here too. Um, that's down in verse 35, so let's go all the way down to verse 35, right? There it is right there. 40 years they ate manna. Jesus, when he was taken out into the wilderness, he was 40 days in the wilderness. Afterward, he was hungry. And what is it afterwards, though? What, what the analogy of this is here, he was living not by bread alone. Because why? He was living by the true manna. He was the manna. But his flesh side of him, after 40 days and nights in the wilderness, and he's coming out of this fast, now he is hungry. And the same thing with the children of Israel. They were 40 years in the wilderness journey, but they were being kept sustained by manna, but a manna that could not give eternal life. So Jesus was in the spirit in the wilderness being tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. What did, what, does, what did it say in Exodus, right, when we first started this? Um, this is where God is going to prove them, yes. See? Gather a day's portion every day that I may prove. Wait, 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 that's not the one I'm looking for. No more. Um, was it Exodus or is that in Deuteronomy? Maybe it's Deuteronomy. Yeah. The command of this day shall you observe to do, multiply, possess the land. Okay. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God has led these 40 years in the wilderness that he might afflict you to prove you and to know what was in your heart. Think about that. They're going through, just like Jesus did for 40 days, they're going through 40 years of temptation proving out who they were and what they were made of. Jesus also did this. Now, then afterwards, here it comes. But he answered, and, and when the tempter came to him and he said, if you be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Hebrew Matthew, I find very interesting in the way the Hebrew Matthew speaks of this. So I wanted you to see that as well. And Jesus answered and said to him, It is written, not by bread alone, etc. Let that one soak for a little bit. Not by bread alone, etc. Now, Matthew just requotes the whole verse there. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sits him on the pinnacle of the temple, right? We already know that. But he's quoting from the book of Deuteronomy, 
right here where it says, Man does not live by bread only, but by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Here's what it actually says in Hebrew. Kilo al chalechem, because not, not only bread, uh, levado, ihayech adam, not only bread alone does, uh, does the man live by. Ki al kol motze pe Yehovah. All right? Because all from the mouth, all that exits the mouth of Yahweh. Yeah, uh, Adam. Does the man live? Whew, this is going to get good. This is literally an eternal life quotation. What is he really saying here? Let's go back to Genesis. We won't be much longer. We're going to be able to sum this up pretty quick. Genesis chapter 2. We'll start with verse... Hmm, we'll go in verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth that watered the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. All right? It may help, even if you don't speak Hebrew, I think it actually helps you to see this a little better in the Hebrew language. Min ha'adama, from, from the earth, ve'ipak uh, be'pa'av, nishmar chayim. Literally from, from, the, from the breath or from the mouth. we find that God breathes life, chayim, into the man, and ve'yahi ha'adam le'nefesh chaya. And the man becomes, or will be, or will be the man, the soul, a life. Now, what are you getting at, Brother Steve? The first instance where we see something coming from the mouth of Yahweh, we'll say, is the breath that breathes into Adam and he becomes a living soul. And when Jesus quotes to Satan, after he's been tempted for 40 days in the wilderness, 40 nights, just like Israel was 40 years in the wilderness journey, night and day, being tempted along the way and everything, proving who they're going to be, right? And then Satan says to, 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 to Jesus, you're hungry now. Basically, you're entering into Israel, right? Like the, like the children of Israel were. You're hungry now. You can just command those stones to be turned to bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, or by every, literally, as I showed you already, if you go back to Deuteronomy, by, but by everything that proceeds, or that literally exits the mouth of Yahweh, man will live by. Now, Oddly enough, and this is what I find fascinating, man has been in death from the very beginning. It has, it has taken Christ himself to come and to follow the same path that Israel followed and to overcome in order to be able to bring out that true breath of life that would cause you not to to die. That's where we're going. This is why he breathed on his apostles after his resurrection. He said, receive ye the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we look at 
what do we have here? John 5. John chapter 5, verse 23, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. Now that goes back to, again to Genesis, right? Because what happened? What was being breathed from the mouth of God was that life. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So what he had, Jesus has. And for some reason, and maybe it's because of the fall, nothing ever took. So man has been in a constant cycle of death ever since. So we come back over here and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Okay. So. Um, Let me move forward with this here. Um, and, okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I have this part about the fiery serpents. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. There was a passage where I... Uh, I'll, I'll go into that later. I, I don't know if I have time to go into that right now. Let's let's go. Let's move on here. Matthew fifteen. Okay, but in vain they do worship me, teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth defileth a man, but that which comes out of the mouth this defiles a man. Now this, believe it or not, this is playing into everything that I just have been talking about. And this is going to be one you guys are going to have to think about. You really will. Let's back up. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand, not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then came his disciples and said to him, Know us, uh, do you not know that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant, which my heavenly Father did not planted, or has not planted, shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and the blind, if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And they answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Then Peter said unto him, Declare unto this parable. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? Do you not? Do not you yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast into the draught, 
But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. And again, that's challenging Talmudic law, but it's deeper. It's even deeper than that. That's what you got to really start thinking about. Because when we look at this, what you put in your mouth doesn't defile you. What you eat, whether you eat with unwashing hands or not, that's, that's of course the premise of this. But even going back to the times of the wilderness journey, they ate manna. That doesn't defile them. No, of course, yeah, their bodies didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. Everything was going great. No problem there. But what comes out of the mouth? Think about it. Jesus is the only one that had the ability to breathe upon you coming out of his mouth and give you eternal life. This is why it was even confusing for the Pharisees of his day. If you remember, they, they actually, um, they let's see, how do they put that there? Prophets are dead. Let's see who what makes yourself something like that. Um, yeah, it's in John eight fifty two. Let me just take you there real quick. You know, and I realize. And maybe a lot of you guys that are listening there, you know, you, you feel that you're following what I'm saying, but I also know this is a very, very difficult message to understand. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that, thou, that you have a devil. Abraham is dead. The prophets. And you say, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom, who, whom makest yourself, uh, that, you, thou thyself? Jesus answered and said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you know not him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, before Abraham was, I am. E -I -A. That's when they took up stones and wanted to kill him. You know, oh, wow, this, this is so amazing. Going into Luke chapter 6. Either, verse 42, either how uh, can you say to your brother, let me pull out the, okay, no, not that, let me, let me start right here, verse 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? This, as simple as it may sound, is far deeper than what any of us will probably ever realize. This is literally speaking, going back to the Garden of Eden, of the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth that which is good. That is Jesus. That's literally speaking of himself. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth that which is evil. He's talking about the serpent in the Garden of Eden. For the abundance of the heart His mouth speaks. Think of that. That I'll give you a clue. Go back, go back to the 
situation that we had we've we've seen earlier where Jesus says you being good you know you being evil you ask if you know if your children ask for 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 bread would you give him a stone or if your children were to ask for fish would would you would you give him a, a serpent and then again what did we read at the very beginning when we first got started with all this what did we read about what was it John you know, um, where was that? Maybe, maybe it was in something different. Um, where he said, you know, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Everything is in with Christ. It's not law. It's all in the positive. It is all God would give it. This is why even when Jesus took and he fed the multitude and he gave them, he multiplied the fish and he multiplied the bread. Why? He was fulfilling the desire of their forefathers' hearts. He was doing what could not be done under the law. So when you read this here, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. Now I realize you can apply that to us in general as well. Yes, but it goes right back to the beginning. The, law, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And with that, and my first answer, this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. No man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by my preaching might be fully known, and all that the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me into his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Right there, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Do you realize how provocative that is? Just remember, we started off with out of the mouth of God. Man doesn't live by bread only, but by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live by, or everything that exits out of his mouth. We find that through Jesus Christ and him alone is that true life. There is documents that go deeper than that. I mean, Jesus was so, he was far greater than what any of us will ever know. And to have anyone to belittle that and to put us back under the law or to put us underneath Israel, the, the, the modern state of Israel, the rabbis there and saying this is where all the truth is going to come. Uh, my, by the way, my, emails are, my email is swamped from Israeli emails coming in from Israel, this major movement of the Jewish people trying to convert everybody and to get them to Judaize Jesus and to make him just some uh, little guy there that uh, that Israel, uh, that, that they're the ones that know the true answers to all this that's going on in the New Testament. They have no clue. What a mess they're turning the word of God into. Uh, I don't know why I have this up here, but I'll just read it real quick. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast you your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Yeah, that's where it was. We were reading this at the beginning. And it shall be given unto you. Seeking you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that seeks receives, and he that see seeketh finds, and him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks fish, will he give him a serpent? I hope this is causing some of you to really think. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And again, that statement in itself is just like the other statements there about everything that proceeds or everything that comes out of the mouth of God is what you live by. That's why Jesus says, if a man keep my saying, so in other words, all that that comes out of his mouth, he'll never see death. 
I want to just really quickly pray with you as I close here. Heavenly Father, we're living in the most perilous times that have ever been lived on this planet. And the evils and the enemy that is coming up to deceive the people and try to turn their hearts away from you, to get to get to get the pull the people away from Jesus Christ and His mercy that He has brought in this last day, I have never in my life before seen an unraveling of the truth of Jesus Christ and His words by those that claim to be believers, by turning the people's minds to t turn them back to the tree of knowledge of good and evil I mean, what are they doing father they want the people to live based on a tree of law when Christ was the tree of life I pray father that if there's any out there that do not truly know you that have not believed you and accepted that what comes from your mouth is eternal life May they have that experience. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. I want to thank you for listening. Um, I know some of these messages I'm saying is probably confusing for many of you. Um, this is a very good message too on our website. Honest Intel leads to prophetic discovery. You might want to check that out. If God does lay on your heart to support the work we're doing, uh, even above this video all the time, our website's there. You can click to support online or by mail, either way. We thank you. We love you. Uh, also, I'll just mention EMP Shield for the sake of, you know, I really think people need to have that protection. Um, you know, so many things are coming up, and I've really got to get into that. And don't forget, too, that um, if I remember right there, don't forget as well. Um, I'm, I'm, the text caught my attention there, so uh, it got me a little bit sidetracked there of what's going on. Um, oh, yes, uh, Patreon. I will. This is going to be a very interesting month, maybe a week or so before I start getting into loading more information for you. But Patreon is going to have some very interesting things coming out this month. So definitely get on Patreon forward slash Israeli News Live. Subscribe to that. Uh, I think you'll be blessed by it. And if you are using, um, let's see, go to the card here. If you are if you purchase something with the MP Shield, don't forget with, you've got to use that INL50 coupon. That saves you $50. I don't want you to pay a full price for this. And they also uh, donate a little bit of that as well to, to our ministry, which helps us as well too. Helps you and helps us as well. So we thank you for that. God bless you.